Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. Today I'm gonna take a Rubik's Cube and try and make it as heavy as I possibly can. So in a recent video, I tried taking a Rubik's Cube and making it as light as physically possible. And the result was this super amazing looking puzzle right here with all of the excess plastic removed. If you haven't yet seen that video, be sure and check it out after this one. Now in that video, I mentioned that a standard Rubik's brand 3x3 weighs about 100 grams. In contrast, one of the best 3x3 speed cubes on the market, the GAN 11M Pro, which just feels super light in your hands, weighs just 63 grams. The idea is that the lighter the pieces, the less force it takes to turn them, and thus the faster the cube feels. Now, how much does this ultra light cube weigh? Just over 30 grams, less than half of the weight of an already super light speed cube. So this all raises the question, if those are among the lightest 3x3s that I could possibly make, then how would you go about making a super heavy 3x3? What is the theoretical heaviest possible Rubik's Cube, and how heavy of one can I make in this video? Let's find out. Now of course, just like in my lightest cube video, we do have some requirements for this heaviest possible cube. Of course, it does have to be a functional 3x3, preferably with stickers so you can solve it, unlike in that last video. Another pretty obvious requirement is that it has to be a standard size of 57 millimeters at the maximum. Of course, the bigger that you make a cube, the heavier it's gonna be. So if you're Tony Fisher and you make a cube that's literally taller than I am, then of course it's gonna weigh more than you could possibly make a standard size cube weigh. And finally, just like my lightest cube video, I'm adding the special requirement that at least the outside of the puzzle has to be made out of the standard plastic of a Rubik's Cube, just for the sake of this video, because of course you could just make a cube out of solid metal, and it would of course be heavier than what I'm going to make. Now I'm not totally ruling that out for any future videos, making a solid metal cube sounds difficult but also amazing, but for the time being we're going to be sticking with the standard plastic outsides and standard mostly plastic mechanism. Alright, now it's time to explain the actual modifications that I'm going to do to make a cube super heavy. And to do that, I first have to introduce you to this 3x3 right here, which is currently my heaviest Rubik's Cube. If we go ahead and get the scale back out again, we can see it comes in at 228 grams, which is just incredibly heavy. Now the reason this cube weighs so much is because it was part of a video I made called Making the Fastest Turning Rubik's Cube. Now the actual fast turning idea didn't turn out that well, but the important part is that I did some modifications to the cube to make it super heavy. So let's go ahead and have a look on the inside of these pieces to see what I did. So if we can open up an edge piece here, we see that we have three dimes. And if we open up one of these corner pieces here, we also have three dimes. So basically in every single piece on this cube, I put three dimes into it. And it turns out that $6 later, you end up with a really heavy cube. So yeah, obviously any approach of making a cube super heavy is going to involve sticking a bunch of metal into the pieces. Now, of course, you can already see the limitations of this idea. Of course, trying to pack a bunch of circular objects into the cubic parts of a puzzle obviously isn't going to be very efficient. Three is absolutely the most dimes you can fit into any piece of this puzzle and still have them mostly fit together. So obviously we're wasting a lot of space. Now, another less obvious limitation of coins is the actual material that they're made out of. Now, of course, if you're making a coin, you want it to be the cheapest metal possible that's also reasonably durable, and most of these metals that they make coins out of tend to have a density of about 8 or 9 grams per cubic centimeter. So if you have a solid centimeter cube of this material, it'll be about 8 or 9 grams. Now, this density isn't that bad. In fact, the densest material you can reasonably get your hands on a lot of for pretty cheap is actually lead, which is only a little bit more dense at 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. And if you want to get much denser than that, you'd have to go crazy with something like tungsten or gold, which both have a density of about 19. 18.3 grams per cubic centimeter. But obviously those are impractical. I mean, filling up a Rubik's Cube with gold would cost tens of thousands of dollars, and even enough tungsten would probably cost well over a hundred. That's way too much for just some dumb video idea, right? Okay, I bought some tungsten. All right, so this is tungsten, the densest metal that I could get my hands on, and this solves all of our problems. It's literally as heavy as gold. This is what holding a block of gold in your hands would feel like, and trust me, it really is incredible how heavy this is compared to how much space it takes up. But not only that, these are also in the shape of individual cubes, and so that means that we can pack these super close together, especially compared to the circular shape of those coins from earlier. So let's get all these untaped from each other, and then we'll have a look at how we can pack them inside of a cube. All right, so these are quarter inch cubes of tungsten. So let's bring out a Rubik's Cube and see theoretically how many of these we could fit inside of one single cube piece. So it looks like two across could definitely fit. Three is too big though. And so if we were to stack up eight of these into a little cube like this, that means we could theoretically fit this much tungsten into every single corner and edge piece on a cube, assuming of course that the mechanism allows space for that. Now there's 20 different pieces on a three by three to put these in. And so if we go ahead and weigh eight of these, that means 20 times 38 grams. That's over 750 more grams that we're going to be adding to a puzzle. All right, I like where this is going. I wonder if we can hit 1000 grams or one kilogram. That would be amazing. Now the question is, what 3x3 are we actually gonna use to make this mod? 
Now I looked all around for a decent cheap cube that could actually fit this much tungsten into all the pieces, and my best answer was this, the Chi Sail W. So let's just open it up and take a look inside of the pieces. So both the corners and the edges have these caps that we can pop off, and as you can see, there's a perfectly big cubic empty space right there inside. So let's go ahead and make sure that these eight tungsten cubes will fit. Wait a minute, before we actually put anything into this puzzle, we definitely have to do a quick weight check so that we know what to compare to in the end. So this cube to begin with weighs just under 80 grams. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, it seems like there's plenty of room. Let's just make sure we can get the cap back on. Uh, we might have to nudge them around inside of there and make sure it's all centered. And yeah, there we go. The cap goes right back on. And this is a very heavy corner piece. Definitely the single heaviest piece to a cube that I have ever felt. Now there still is one little tiny problem with this approach, and that is there's still a little bit of extra space inside of there. So moving to this edge piece next, we're gonna add one more little trick, which is, again, using coins. So if we go ahead and take a dime, which is the smallest US coin, as you can see, we can't really fit inside of there while still being able to fit our eight tungsten cubes. So luckily I do have some smaller coins. This is a Euro cent, and if we fit it inside of here, it's still at a bit of an angle, but if we push in there really hard, we can see that it's actually pretty much the perfect fit and we can get it totally flat. And now we can fit our eight cubes right on top of it. And then hopefully we'll still have enough room to fit the center cap on. So let's go ahead and try it out. I think the technique is to get this corner cube here to rest on the plastic like this and then turn the whole piece this way and then it'll go on. So now we just have to do that same coin modification to the corner as well as put coins and tungsten cubes in all the rest of the edges. As you can see, there still is a little bit of extra space in there. So maybe I can find something else to put in there. But yeah, then we will have the heaviest cube that I can possibly make. But while we're here, just for fun, let's go ahead and check out how much this cube weighs with only two pieces modified so far. 158, that's over twice the weight that it was originally with only two pieces. So this is just incredible. I cannot wait until the end of the video. So let's go ahead and start the time lapse. All right, so here is the finished product. Let's go ahead and have a look. So, okay, I guess I've already kind of forgotten just how heavy this thing is. It really just does not make any logical sense that such an object can be so heavy. This thing is ridiculous. But yeah, as you just saw, I did put a brand new set of stickers on the cube and turning this thing just feels so ridiculous. But yeah, it looks pretty nice. And I did solve most of the problems when it comes to rattling by just filling as much of the empty space as possible. I just got some random metal objects like little bits of wire and just stuck it in all the little gaps. As you can see in these center pieces here, I filled it up with magnets, just anything metal to fill space and add as much weight as possible. And there's one more thing I did just because the first time I put it together and tried turning it, it felt like the springs that came in the cube were just being totally overpowered like instead of kind of feeling springy as you turn it it just felt kind of floppy as if the springs were just being totally compressed just under the weight of the pieces so i actually swapped out all the springs with the strongest set of springs that i could find and now we have that springy feeling back a little bit and i'm not even kidding just doing that checkerboard pattern there actually made my fingers feel tired it feels as if i've been like lifting weights with my fingers or something it's really hard to describe just how heavy something is over a video so let's try and do a quick little comparison here's a standard rubik's brand cube i'm going to set these next to each other and try and pick each one up with the same amount of force. So I'm putting a fair amount of force trying to pick this cube up, but of course it's not really working. Whereas this cube just goes flying with that same amount of force. Like really, that's the same amount of force I'm putting into both cubes. Now before we do the final weigh-in, there's no way I can end this video without doing a full solve on this puzzle. So let's go ahead and scramble it up and then hopefully this will give you a good idea of how heavy this cube actually is. So let's do some inspection here. Uh, there we go. And three, two, one, and go. So as you can see, I can actually do some pretty decent turns on this puzzle, but it's just, it's just a struggle even to hold it. Like doing that cube rotation, I almost dropped it. There's so much momentum to this thing. It's just ridiculous. And sometimes you kind of get stuck. It's actually incredible how good this cube turns though, despite how heavy it is. 
but man, it gives you such a finger workout. I legitimately think you could make your fingers like super strong by using this cube. My back left hand right now is just getting worked out. So now it's time for what you've all been waiting for. Let's do the final weigh-in. Will it be over a kilogram? I mean, it sure feels like it to me. So let's go ahead and put it on the scale very carefully and overload. So it looks like my little tiny scale can't actually handle how heavy this cube is. So I think we'll have to take it apart and maybe try and weigh it in halves. All right, so I'm just adding to the scale piece by piece until it becomes too much. And it looks like that was the one that pushed it over the edge. So let's take that back off again. We have 591.97. Now we can take all of the pieces off of the scale and then put the rest of the cube onto the scale. Okay, 362.62. And then after some quick off-screen math, we have a total of 954.59 grams. So we didn't quite reach a kilogram. We were really close, just 50 grams off, but at least we were really close. By the way, that means this cube weighs over two pounds, which may not sound like a lot, but I mean, try picking up a five pound weight and thinking of almost half of that in the size of a Rubik's cube. It is really just ridiculous. That's also about 10 times the weight of a normal Rubik's cube or something like 30 times the weight of this light Rubik's Cube that I made earlier. This is just an insane weight difference here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is definitely one of my favorite things that I've ever made in a video. Definitely the hardest to hold thing I've ever made. My hands are sweating just holding it up here, but I hope you guys enjoyed the process as much as I did. Let me know in the comments what other kind of crazy mods like this you want me to make in the future, like maybe making a cube out of solid metal that's even heavier. Who knows? But I'll see you guys next time.